This is my 1984 Chevrolet Silverado. And today, I'll fix part of the frame. This is where the rear shock used to sit on the passenger side, and it wasn't correct, connected correctly. They just used the bolt instead of the proper hardware. Now this hole is all wallered out from the shock moving around, and there's a big old crack up here. Here's what I'm trying to replicate. This is a known good frame. It's been sandblasted. The shock mounts right up here. When you buy new shocks, they usually give you new shock mounts and they mount through this hole. There's a washer and a nut. And the shock mounts down at the axle and the other side up here at the shock mount. So it's crucial that this hole is in the right location. It's a 5 8 hole that's a 5 8 from the top of the frame rail. I would also like to know whether this frame is still straight. So we'll take a laser level, like you can get in any hardware store, and I will shine it down the edge. And yep, that's good enough for me. I pulled you up a little higher so you can see. There's the mark right here. And the mark right there. And if we're really lucky, there's the mark right there. The rear brake line, the heart line, is running on the inside of the frame here. So if you want to weld there, might be a good time to remove it. It's held in with a few clips here. and then curves around down to the rear axle. Let's see if we can't get that out. Well, there's one. Good penetrating fluid. That makes all the difference. And then there's a clip right here, right where the soft line joins the hard line. <clears throat> I recently replaced the soft line, so this should come out. And now, if I'm lucky, I could probably just move this forward ever so slightly without having to disconnect this. I can get my welder in here. And more importantly, I can get my wire wheel in here to take the dirt and debris off the back. So I can see and get a clean weld. This should give us a nice groove to start welding this. I put a groove in there so that the weld can penetrate into both parts. Well, I found that that is not our only crack. <laughs> Looks like this thing has spiderweb crack. I'll use a white pen to mark it for you. There's a crack, here's a crack. Here's a crack going back there and back there. Here's a crack going down here. This actually goes up here. This one. Oh, let's just start. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, looks like, yep. Got my work cut out for me.
Now at this point, if I see this extensive damage, you might consider just buying a section of frame rail about this wide. And for these CK trucks, you can buy sections of frame rail. What I reckon I'll do is I will uh, take the tension of the frame, weld it, and see how good of a repair I can do. And if I'm not satisfied afterwards, then I'll just buy the section of frame rail. What I'm doing now is I found the end of each of these cracks and I'm going to drill a hole in it to make sure that it doesn't spread afterwards. All right. One, two, three, four, crack here, that one, joining that one. Okay. I'll prep the surface. Flapper disc. It's a 36 inch grid zirconium disc made by Weiler. Now the advantage of prepping the surface is that I get all the paint off and I can see if I didn't miss any other cracks in the material. There are a couple nooks and crannies that I couldn't get on the flap disc. So I'm using my air sander here. I think one pass with a wire brush, then we're ready to wipe it down. Welding and painting have one thing in common. The better you prep, the better your weld will be. Between you and me, I'm not a professional welder. I learned welding with a welding teacher, and then I had a bunch of experience, but I'm far from perfect. I talked to a professional welder who does nothing else but weld thick steel every day. We looked at this together, and he said that is the way to go about it. Second option is to put plates on. Third option is to replace that piece of frame. But today, I just want to find out what I can do here. I'm going to MIG weld this today, and I got 35 thou wire. 19 and a half volts and we had 30 feet a minute for the wire. Well, let's see what we can do here. And I welded right through. Well, you can't say I didn't get any penetration, can you? Well, I guess I crank it down a little bit. Start over here. Fill that in later. Let's try this corner here. First, I'm going to fill in that hole.
I'll clean it up with a water brush so I can see. Okay, time to fill this in. Well, I finished building this. Now it's time to make that hole again for the hardware that is gonna accept the shock. Let's see here. I'm going to lubricate my stepper a bit. Oh, yeah. Almost. And we're home free. That'll do. This color, that part, has to go through the frame and it just so fits. Put our washer on the other side. And our net. Oh man, this is still hot. Okay. And here's our shock. Washer. Spring washer. Nut. And it fits. Final question. Is this a good repair? Will it hold? Take a look at this from multiple angles. A. I know that the base material has a certain thickness and I certainly want to make sure that the hole and uh, the material around the hole is at least as thick and I know that all around it is at least as thick as the base material. That's a good thing. It's thicker than it was before. B. Is the filler material that we used to fill in those wells, is it going to be strong enough? The base material, the small carbon steer, probably has a tensile strength of somewhere around 36 kilopounds square inch, and the tensile strength of the filler that we use, the MIG wire, the R70S, is 70 kilopounds square inch. So it's going to be tougher. On the downside, it might be more brittle, and it might break again. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Finally, this hole is exactly the size of the shock mount it will just barely fit in there. So there's not much of a chance that this is going to move around and wall around again in the future. Finally, as you can see, I flattened this part out because there is an indent here for the shock to come up and sit in this indent of the frame rail. So I flattened this out and in order to add strength, I also welded this from the back and then put a cap on the top. I think this is likely going to hold for a 40-year-old frame. That is probably a pretty good repair. What do you think?